Kirby Kelly was just four years old when she walked in on someone watching pornography. A few years later, she found a stash of porn hidden in someone's house. In a few more years, friends at a sleepover showed her porn online. Before long, Kirby had a full-blown addiction that would take her years to break. Kirby Kelly is a young author, speaker, and podcast host. She also produces content for social media platforms, focusing on the Gen Z and millennial age groups. Knowing firsthand what it's like to battle sinful habits, Kirby says surrendering to God is the key. In her new book, You Can Be Free, Kirby outlines a plan to help others break unhealthy patterns and find peace. All right, everyone. Well, please welcome to the 700 Club, Kirby Kelly. Kirby, thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, absolutely. Glad to be back. Yes, you look amazing. I love that dress. Thank you. Okay, well, we got to talk about this, girl. We're going to get into your book. It's called You Can Be Free, mm -hmm. Overcoming Temptation and Habitual Sin by the Power and the Promises of the Gospel. Before we get into the book, we obviously got to talk about you and like your journey and what you've mm -hmm. experienced. So your parents got divorced when you were only eight years old. Mm -hmm. And then a couple years later, your father passed away. Mm -hmm. Can you just take us back to those those days of your life? Yeah, definitely. It was it was hard. It, mm. There was a lot of emotions that I was dealing with at a very young age at yeah. the loss of my father and the divorce of my parents. And a lot of that, that anger, that sorrow was directed towards God. Mm. Why would you allow this to, to happen to me? Why would you mm. allow this thing to go on in my life? And it was really interesting because I ended up internalizing a lot of that. It became, well, could I have done something about this? Is this my fault? Mm -hmm. And it really just led me down a, a really dark path of depression and it, it took some time to really break free even from from that mentality of thinking. Mm. Well then, you know, let's go a couple years even before you were eight, mm -hmm. at four years old, yeah. you were exposed to pornography. What happened? Yeah, so basically I was looking for a specific person. I needed help with <clears throat> something. I ended up walking into the room that that person was in and they were watching pornography. Mm. And as a, as a young child, I mean, I was curious, I was confused, I didn't know what I was looking at. Yeah. And eventually a few years later, I was looking for something in, in someone's desk and I came across a, uh, came across a stash of porno pornographic magazines. Mm -hmm. And again, it was there was this, this curiosity, this, wait, I think I've seen this before. And it wasn't until I was 10 years old when a group of girls mm -hmm. at a sleepover showed me how to access it, how to clear my search history, all these wow. things that, that this curiosity became intrigue and it eventually mm -hmm. developed into this habit yeah. that I could not stop. Okay, so that, would you say a couple, I mean, how old were you, would you say, when you started to like actively watch porn and oh, started 10 to- 10 years old. Wow. I was I was so young and it blows my mind now looking back, looking mm -hmm. at just how young a 10 year old, 10 yeah. year old is as an right. adult. It's like, I was so young. And, it, and mm -hmm. that's the harsh reality is that just more and more of this yeah. is available online. And as a child, I kept this secret. Mm -hmm. I, I kept this down, locked down, nobody knew yeah. about it. And that only bred a further habitual cycle and shame. Right, and I mean, you talk about it in your book that you really struggled with depression and you struggled mm -hmm. with shame mm -hmm. so much so that you were having like suicidal thoughts. Mm -hmm. But something happened when you went to a summer camp. Can you can you talk about all that? Definitely, I was 14 years old when I went to Sky Ranch Christian Camps, love them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I truly had a real and radical encounter with God. Wow. And it was beautiful because at that moment, not only was there this redemption with, now I have a, a perfect and present father mm. in, in God, yeah. but I can have full relationship and full freedom from these things I was struggling with. Did all my sin go away at that moment? No, mm. but that was the beginning of a journey of, of God sanctifying me right. and, and walking me out in the newness of life he had for me. So yeah, I mean, what happened to that addiction as you became a Christian and then ultimately how did you finally break free because you're mm -hmm. currently walking in freedom yes. so we got to talk about that oh yeah praise God it did <laughs> not happen overnight mm -hmm. there, there is healing and deliverance that can happen overnight yeah, but right. when you're living habitually in something there's a lot of of things that we need to unpack and unlearn habits mentalities lies that we're believing there's just so much to unpack there so it wasn't until my freshman year at dbu that i truly began to walk out freedom from from mm. that specific sin in my life and it began with finding community confessing that yes. sin and seeing my sin for what it was and not 
not seeing myself through this lens of shame and condemnation, but truly yeah. walking out the newness and redemption that Christ had for me. Yeah, I think when we're when we're in habitual sin, mm -hmm. shame can really hold us down and back from yes. experiencing freedom. And I think it's because of the lies that we believe from the enemy, like we're not good enough. You yeah. talk about that in your book. What are some of the lies that we just believe about ourselves? Well, not thinking we're good enough is mm. definitely one of them. I think a lot of us disqualify ourselves and we identify with our sin. This is how it's always going to be, mm. or we're too afraid to even <laughs> approach God with this yeah. thing. Am I, am, is he going to count me out? Is he going to turn his face from me? Because I've been doing the thing that I know I shouldn't be doing. But the reality is, is that Jesus, our savior is the only one who can pull us out of this pit, who can yeah. pull us out of the water that we're drowning in. And yeah. we have to approach him. So in my book, I break down how we have to have an accurate view of our enemy who's against us. We mm -hmm. need to have a biblically accurate view of who our good God is, what the gospel really is about. And we also need yeah. to have an understanding of what it means to be human mm -hmm. and even just that duality of, of this fleshly nature, but also walking in the spirit and in the newness of life. Yeah, I wanted to also talk to you about the fact that so many people think that a porn addiction, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, is just a, a male problem. That is clearly not the case. And no. so would you just, I don't know, just shed some light for people who think that it's only men who struggle with sexual sins. Truly, when you look at the statistics, it is it is shocking. And I go into the statistics in my book of not only how young people are being exposed to it, but mm -hmm. just men and women are being exposed yeah. to it. Sin does not discriminate. Right. The enemy does not discriminate in that sense. Mm -hmm. So I think as women, we need to be more open about this area mm -hmm. where we are secretly struggling in silence. Yeah. And allow for all of us, men and women alike, to walk out freedom in this area because we all need freedom in, in the area of sex and relationships. Yep. We all need a redeemed look at what that looks like. Yeah, absolutely. Well, your book is, like we said, it's called You Can Be Free. What are some of the steps in becoming free from no matter what sin you might be experiencing? Yes. Yeah, this book is for anybody struggling with anything. You don't yeah. have, a, have to have a porn addiction to read this book. You <laughs> yeah. can truly be struggling with any type of addiction, any type of shame, any type of mentality. Mm -hmm. and and so I kick off the book by stressing the importance of community and confession. I go more into my story mm -hmm. uh, in those first few chapters, and I really break down lies that we believe. I, I help the reader to lay and establish a foundation of truth of knowing who God is, who the enemy is, his tactics, his yeah. motives, his mission, uh, and even us as humanity. And then I, I begin to transition into more of a practical sense. Okay, what are some biblical disciplines? What does it mm -hmm. look like? how God wired us with habit formation, even mm -hmm. the science behind it, the science and the scriptures behind walking out freedom and, and rewiring our brain. Mm -hmm. So th there's many steps. There's 11 steps to this battle plan that I wrote, mm -hmm. uh, but those are just a few of them and they all build on top of each other. Yeah, I love that. You know, I have, I've personally, you know, just shared some things about my life before and sometimes being vulnerable can be, can make you feel like I don't know if it's shame, but it, you just mm -hmm. feel very exposed. For yeah. those who are like afraid of being exposed and afraid of just that feeling and being vulnerable, mm -hmm. like what would you say to encourage them to be vulnerable to safe people? Mm. Definitely be prayerful. Be prayerful about the community that God has given you or the mm -hmm. community that he will bring you because confession really is that first step. Yeah. Vulnerability, God has called us to live in the light, to bring right. those things that are in the darkness into the light, not not to just expose it for the mm -hmm. sake of exposing yeah, it, but so it. that real healing can begin. So walk yeah. in that freedom, walk in that vulnerability because the mm -hmm. enemy is going to try and get you to live in isolation. Right. God calls us to vulnerability. Amen. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Last question. You talk about this in the book. Why is it when we try harder, mm -hmm. things don't all, it's like it doesn't ever work when we try harder. Mm -hmm. You talk about that in the book. Can you just talk about that? Now I a do. Bit? When we try our best, but we don't <laughs> succeed. That's the title of that chapter. Yeah. And it's so true. I, for so long, I was mm -hmm. out of my own effort, out of my own strength, mm -hmm. out of my own willpower and might, I was trying to get free and it didn't work. Whether mm -hmm. it was a week, a month, or almost even a year of being free, I couldn't do it by myself. And that's the importance of this subtitle here, the gospel. We need to be partnered right. with God, rely on his strength and his power and his guidance so that we can walk out 
this new life, this new path with yeah. him. So many of us are trying to just undo what has already been done. God is calling us to just walk out a new path entirely, and it's paved with new disciplines that develop mm. into devotion, that develops into the freedom that we want to see. Mm. Girl, you're preaching. We could talk for hours. <laughs> Kirby, thank you so much for being here. And I just commend you for just being so open and honest and transparent. And I know it's helping a lot of people do the same and break free. So thank you so much, girl. Absolutely. All right, everyone. Well, make sure you get Kirby's new book. It's called You Can Be Set Free, Overcoming Temptation and Habitual Sin by the Power and the Promises of the Gospel. It's available nationwide. Make sure you get your hands on it.